Golden State Media Concepts Baseball Podcast. We cover everything major league from spring training to the World Series. We've got your favorite club covered from New York to Boston to LA. This is the Golden State Media Concepts Baseball Podcast. What is up? Welcome into the GSMC Baseball Podcast. As always, this podcast is brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. It is a Monday here, and we're going to go over some stuff. This weekend, we had a nice weekend of baseball throughout the league. We had a bunch of games on Saturday, a couple double headers going on on Friday. Uh, well, I mean, this whole weekend, we had some good series. We had uh, Braves, Phillies, we had Giants, Dodgers in San Francisco, the Angels welcome to the Yankees into Anaheim. Rays, Rays, Red Sox, Rays actually looking pretty good. They've won. They got. They kind of went on a little streak too. They went on an eight game winning streak before dropping one on Saturday, Sunday. But we'll get to a bunch of these games. Pirates, uh, Pirates, Cardinals played this weekend. Uh, A's, A's and Astros went out of this weekend. So we had a bunch of good stuff to talk about. We can start on Friday though with some scores and pitching performances uh, for you to go over over in Colorado. I know we had a good performance. There, Rockies actually was a, a when well, it was actually in the game was in Miami. Of course, one nothing game would not be in Colorado. That would be interesting, uh, the rare rare one nothing game. But this was in Miami, a much bigger park there, where it was a pitching uh, interesting pitching. But uh, what happened for the Rockies? They had their starter Anderson only lasted uh, inning in the third, but didn't give up any runs. Um, he but the bullpen came in and they used how many different pitchers did they use here? They used six different pitchers. Uh, well, other than the starter, five bullpen guys to get the shutout, combined shutout there, and um, beating uh, Julio Urena, who actually pitched pretty well, went seven innings, only allowed one run on six hits, five strikeouts, one walk. That was a one nothing win for the Rockies in Baltimore. It was a shutout for the Orioles. Where they got a night, I mean, six nothing shutout for the Orioles there in on Friday. You gotta like that. I mean, against the Tigers, you, you should be able to win, win these games, even though it is it is kind of the bottom of the barrel with both teams. But I mean, when you get Chris Tillman going out there looking for his first win, he had not had a good good uh, start of the season, but he had a great start on this one. In this one on Friday, when seven innings allowed, no runs on only one hit. Walked two, struck out five, so lowered his ERA down to still still not very wanted though at seven. But uh, did get a couple home runs from his teammates. Machado went deep, hit his ninth, and Pedro Alvarez actually hit two home runs, and uh, those were his third and fourth on the year. All right, going out the rest of the day, we had a couple walk offs on Friday. Uh, the first one was in Pittsburgh. It was a long game, went into extra innings, but it was Starling Marte. They hit a base hit up the middle, knocked in David Freeze to get the winning run across. Winning, uh, they, So the Pirates win that one in 11. They got home runs from Gregory Polanco, and the Cardinals' uh, Judd Jerko also went deep in that game. Uh, I mean, they had a good pitching performances from, I mean, a couple guys that you probably haven't heard of, but it was... For the Cardinals, in the I mean, both starters got no no decisions, obviously. But Miles Mikolas went seven innings, only allowed two runs on six hits, struck out seven to give, to give up that home run to Polanco. But um, that was about it. As the Cardinals did have the lead in that game throughout most of it, they were I mean they were up five to two going into the ninth inning. Pittsburgh scored three, just tie it up in the bottom of the ninth, forcing extras, and that was on. Uh, just a nice string of they got some fortune, obviously a couple errors, and then a double by Jordy Mercer to knock in the tying runs. So you gotta like that if you're a Pittsburgh Pirates fan coming back to beat your division rival. All right, Phillies and Braves, the two matchup of the two teams going in, uh, kind of in the surprise column this year, where they're a lot better than everybody thought they were going to be out in the, out east, uh, but they still trailing the Mets, I believe, in the standings. If we look just peek at these. Uh, American National League East standings. Yeah, Mets 
Still sitting a game and a half over both the Phillies and the Nationals. I mean, Phillies and the Braves. Nationals sitting down. They're four games under 500, while the Braves and the Phillies are five games over over 500. And that's actually after this weekend's game. So we'll get to that. The scores. Phillies beat the Braves in the first matchup, seven to three. As they uh, start off that series there in Philadelphia. And this the list of the scores. Braves came back one won the Saturday game four to one, and then on Sunday for the rubber match, the Braves whacked the Phillies ten to one in Philadelphia to get their win of the series. So we'll go over that uh, game. It was we'll go over that game in just a second. It was a nice start from Brandon McCarthy. We'll go over that one in just a second as we're going to get through our Friday games really quickly here. A couple other games going on. I know the Indians held off the Mariners. Uh, six to th- six to five. Actually, the Mariners scored three runs in the in the ninth inning. Corey Kluber though got the win on Friday as the bullpen was just able to hold serve. Uh, Kluber did go eight and two thirds innings, allowed four three runs on four hits, walked three, struck out ten, did give up a home run to Mitch uh, or make that yeah to Mitch Haniger, and then Zadino went deep off of uh, off of. Allen to make it real interesting there in the ninth, but uh, Cody Allen was able to get the last out. As Kluber went eight and two thirds inning, so he was actually pitching into the ninth inning when he got kind of roughed up for just a sec there. But the Cody Allen was able to get the last out after giving up the homer. Got the win there for the Indians. All right, that's pretty much it regarding stuff's a note on the. Friday, on Friday, let's go over to Saturday because we kind of get a little bogged down sometimes here on these scores. <laughs> All right, Cubs got a shutout. Uh, Jose Quintana pitched pretty well, got in the shutout. 3-0 three, three win for the Cubs over their division rival Brewers. Quintana getting the start, kind of returning right, right his ship, but to get his third win of the year, went seven shutout innings, only allowing two runs, uh, one walk, seven, seven strikeouts. So nice start there for the Cubs left-hander. Uh, wasn't bad either. The, the Braves, I mean, the Brewers, they tried his, they tried their minus as well as junior Guerrera went six innings, only allowed one run, six innings, only allowed one run, three hits, six strikeouts, two walks, but did get the loss in that one. Tough luck loser right there. In Arizona, the Diamondbacks win this one in extras as they um, look to take another series. They have they got to lose a series. The Diamondbacks have uh, as they were playing in Washington. I believe they won the first two games of that one to drop the Sunday game. So, uh, yeah, but the good pitching performance there from Patrick Corbin went six and two thirds innings, only allowed three runs on seven hits, seven strikeouts, one walk. But, I mean, his the big the problem was he gave up a couple home runs. It was to uh, Zimmerman, yeah, and Howie Kendrick. So those were the three runs right there. Zimmerman hit a two-run homer. Kendrick a solo shot. So that's really what all the only thing that did in Corbin did get the win or did get, didn't get the win. Got the, not got no decision, but because uh, that game went to extra innings. All right, Braves beat up on the Red Sox twelve to six. Couple of big blowouts. Mariners beat up on the Indians twelve to four. As Nelson Cruz had a great day at the plate, uh, going four for five with two RBIs and a run scored, and he had a bomb too. So he had a he had a double and a homer in that game as well. So in that four for five outing against the Cleveland Indians, not a good start for Carlos Carrasco. Only the last three innings, giving up four Ernie's uh, walk and two home runs. So. I want to write that ship there. All right, on Saturday, Braves got the win, came back and beat the Phillies 4-1 to one after the loss on Friday. Got a nice pitching performance from Mike fulton as he went six innings, only allowed one run on three hits, two walks, six strikeouts, did, did give up a home run to um, Franco. So, But that was pretty much the only blemish on his outing there. Nick Pivetta, uh not so much. Got his first loss in the year. We only went five innings, four runs on six hits, three walks, six strikeouts to take up a home run to Nick Marcakis. So Atlanta came back after the loss on Friday, got the win there. Uh, Giants and Dodgers had a doubleheader on uh, Saturday. And if 
the Giants had a silver lining from that first game. They got, I mean, they got beat up pretty bad. Fifteen to six was the final of the first game, but they had Pablo Sandoval actually go on the mound and pitch the ninth inning in the blowout, and he was the only guy to get a one-two-three inning in that pitching staff. So, I mean, go watch the highlights of Pablo pitching. He has a pretty nasty curveball, and he's throwing about eighty-eight. So. Not bad for the, for the Giants and Pablo Sandoval, but they did get the loss in the first game. However, in the nightcap of that doubleheader, they came back to get the win, eight to three. After being down two nothing, the whole most of the game they scored three in the fifth, one in the sixth, and four in the seventh to get their eight runs and uh, beat up on the Dodgers there in on Saturday. They had a nice pitching performance from Johnny Cueto as he was pretty dominant after those two runs in the first inning. Cueto goes. Six innings allows four, or makes that that's Alex Woodline. Cueto goes six innings, allows two runs, three hits, two walks, three strikeouts. Did give up a home run to Corey Seager. That was the only way the Dodgers scored against Cueto. His ERA does go up a little bit, still at a cool point eight four, and I'm pretty sure it's still good for the lead lead league in uh, ERA. As well, just yep, still good for the lead league in ERA. As Garland Garcia is still sitting at one point oh oh, but Cueto under one with that ERA. Gotta like that if you're a Giants fan. Twins and Reds, uh, both teams kind of scuffling, looking looking for a little more direction. But Jacob Rezzi was a nice nice start for him, getting the win for the Twins. He went six innings, only allowed one run on five hits, two walks, three strikeouts. Did, did give up a home run to uh, Cor- uh, to Schiebler, so but that was the only run the Reds scored the whole game. White Sox shut out the Royals. Fulmer, the uh, I mean, the young starter for the White Sox had a pretty nice season right now. Carson Fulmer went seven innings of shutout ball, only allowed four hits, three walks, three strikeouts. That was all it, all he needed. And the White Sox, uh, they scored eight on the Royals, the lowly Royals. Those those teams kind of also scuffling in single, the single-digit win category. They actually played two as well on Saturday with the Royals coming back to win the second game, five to two. All right. Went over those guys. I'll be looking for some more pitching performances here on my sheet. Oh, yeah. Pirates got a win against the Cardinals after losing an extras the game before. They take the Saturday game. Williams, the starter for the Pirates, was uh, actually pretty good. Went six innings, only allowed two runs on four hits. Two walks, two strikeouts as his ERA now sitting at a 2-2-9. Very nice there for Trevor Williams. As the, he continues to pitch well, got his fourth win on the year just already in the six starts. I like that. All right, Marlins beat the Rockies. It was a four to one victory for the Marlins as the Rockies continue to scuffle at the plate there. They did get the win in the first game, only one nothing, but they only was able to push across one run again. And this one is Wei Yin Chen, the left hander for the Marlins, went five and a third innings, only allowed one run. On four hits, three strikeouts, two walks, and to give up a home run. That was the only run he allowed to Charlie Blackman. All right. I, Astros came back after losing to the A's. They came back and won on, well, it was on on Friday, actually. I just want to talk touch on that. The first start, I talked about it on the Friday game. Uh, Sean Manea, actually, his, on his first start back from that pit, no hitter, actually pitched pretty well. Did give up a hit early in the game. But he actually got got another win, beating out dueling Dallas Keuchel. Uh, Mane went seven innings, allowed one run, unearned one unearned run on four hits, seven strikeouts, one walk. So the A's actually got the win there on Friday. Just wanted to touch on that and forgot that game when I was doing Fridays. Eight to one was the win there, but they did, did get beat up on Saturday, losing eleven nothing. It was uh, Lance McCullers Jr. Pitched very well against the A's. Got his fourth win of the year as he went seven innings of shutout ball, only allowing two hits, striking out seven, and didn't walk at one batter. So, got like that if you are a Astros fan. Padres beat up on the Mets. Lucchese got his third win of the year. Pitched very well against the tough Mets lineup. Went five and two-thirds innings, only allowed two runs on four hits. Struck out six, walked, walked two. He did give up a home run. So you and Cespedes, that was the only runs that the Padres allowed in that game. The two-run homer by Cespedes. Yankees bit up on the Angels, 11-1. to Masahiro Tanaka, as he continues his up-and-down season, pitched well on Saturday, though. As he went six innings, only allowed one run on two hits, seven, or make that nine strikeouts, two walks, one home run allowed. That was to Zach Cozart. 
as the Yankees were on their way to a sweep of the Angels. All right. We're going to take a quick break here as we come to the end of this first segment. I'm just going to quickly go over Sunday's show or Sunday's uh, games from yesterday. And then we'll be talking about the Yankees and they're continue, continuing on their winning streak. Uh, and then also the Angels who are looking like they're scuffling a little bit now after taking a couple serious losses in a row. Okay, we'll be, we'll be right back with all that stuff. This is your ultimate stop for everything sports. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Should I say more? From the NFL, MLB, the NBA, to MMA. It's all in here. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Listen now. What is up? Welcome back to the GSMC Baseball Podcast, segment number two, as we're going to quickly go over the games from Sunday. Braves beat up on the Phillies 10-1. It was a nice start from Brandon McCarthy getting his fourth win on the season as he continues his perfect record. He went five and a third inning, five and a third innings, allowed one run on five hits, six strikeouts, three walks. Very nice start for McCarthy there. As the Braves were beating up on the Phillies, Braves hit uh, hit a couple of home runs. Albies, Ozzy Albies again. This one he actually, I think he, yeah, it was on Sunday. He hit the very first pitch of the game, well over the fence in right field over against the uh, against the Phillies in Philadelphia. So I mean, you gotta like that if you are the Braves and their young players. Yeah, his, the very first pitch of the game did not even take one as he launched it into right field. As those young young. Uh, Boppers still keep going for the Braves. Acuna Jr. went had two more hits, two for three for him. So you gotta like that as the as he's already hitting second in that order. Gotta like that if you're a Braves fan, as they're gonna have some have some fun this this whole season. It looks like they're gonna continue on as using those young young guys to see if they can keep going though. Nationals still scuffling. They're like I said, they're four games under 500 to get a win on. On Sundays, they avoided being swept by the Diamondbacks at home. The Nationals won that one three to one. Robbie Ray had to actually leave that game early with an injury, it looked like an oblique injury. Joe Gonzalez had a nice start as he went seven innings, only allowed one run on six hits, two walks, eight strikeouts for Geo. So a nice start there. Like I said, Ray only lasted an inning and a third before having to leave with an injury. Um, continuing on the Cardinals lose to the Pirates. It was actually this. Yeah, this is going to be a guy we're going to talk about uh, more in this he- in this segment. It was a great start as a uh, Kingham. It was Nick Kingham for the Pirates. The rookie right hander uh, was perfect through six and two thirds innings before Paul DeYoung broke it up with a single um, in that seventh inning. But he went six and two thirds innings of perfect baseball on his first start. In the major leagues, I mean, that's about as good as you can get right there. Without, I mean, without throwing a good, without throwing a perfect game, he went seven innings, allowed no runs on one hit by DeYoung. Nine strikeouts in his first ever start in the big leagues. So you gotta like that if you are a Pirates fan and got some young arms as they continue to surprise here. Pirates are now six games over five hundred on the season, seventeen and eleven. You gotta like that. Cardinals dropped to fifteen and twelve. And the Pirates, I mean, they're still hitting. They're hitting, too. Yeah, I mean, they got lots of good stuff going on. They had a bunch of guys. I mean, they had all, it was, all sing, it was a bunch of singles attack yesterday as it did score five runs on a bunch of singles. As you can see, even got a, bit, a run off of a hit by a pitch in those cool uniforms. They're wearing the black, the white top, old-fashioned white tops with the black pants and the little hat with the stripes on it, if you can imagine. And the Pirates, they're still pretty cool uniforms. All right, Astros. They win the rubber match of that series against the A's on Sunday, 8-4. to four. Trevor Cahill did not look very good for the A's as he takes the sixth loss. Houston actually kind of blew that game open late in the game as it was actually a uh, Garrett Cole start for them on Sundays. He went six and two-thirds innings, allowed three runs on six hits, struck out 12, but uh, did, did, did he get a no decision as that game was tied going into the late innings? 
Royals beat the White Sox four five to four as they take that. Well, I mean they, they played four games in that series. Play with I think it was a split. Cubs beat the Brewers two nothing on a very nice start from Tyler Chatwood. They're definitely the best of his career. Uh, or best of his season so far, and play in the best in a Cubs uniform as he went seven innings of shutout baseball, only allowing two hits, four strikeouts, three walks for Chatwood as the Cubs did get two runs in order to beat the Brewers in that one. Chatwood actually knocked in no run himself with an RBI single. Mets beat up on the Padres. That start, that series was real back and forth as the Padres beat up on the Mets, and the Mets come back and beat up on the Padres 14-2. to Zach Wheeler, nice start for him. As uh, now he's trying to solidify himself in that bullpen, mean may, may, may that in the in that rotation. Now with Matt Harvey going to the bullpen, my, excuse me, as uh, he went five innings, allowed two runs on six hits, not, struck out nine, and walked to two. As uh, Wheeler got the win there for New York Angels and Yankees. Yankees complete the sweep. CC Sabathia pitched very nicely in this one. Uh, against Tyler Skaggs on sun- Sunday night baseball. S- Sabathi went seven innings, allowed one run on five hits, struck out four, walked one. Angels could not could not get more than one across against Yankees pitching. And Gary Sanchez hit a big home run off of Tyler Skaggs. That was all the runs the Yankees would need, a two-run homer for Sanchez. All right, continuing on, the Giants get the win over the Dodgers in the the final game of their four-game series. Remember, they played two on Saturday, so the Giants were looking for a big series win um, on the Dodgers. To, I mean, they've already played the Dodgers 10 times now this year as they now finished up that 10-game swing 6-4, uh, and four, which, I mean, if you're a Giants fan, after losing Bumgarner and Samarja for much of that beginning of the season, or beginning of the month, and then Bumgarner still out probably another month, uh, you got to like that, going 6-4 and four against your bitter rivals, the Los Angeles Dodgers. So the Giants get the win 4-2 to two there. Ty Block, a nice start for him as he bounces back. Uh, it goes six innings, allows two runs on six hits, walked one, struck out four. Dodgers come to Maeda, still getting haunted by at t Park. I mean, he pitches against the Giants really well in Dodger Stadium. Actually struck him out, I think, double-digit strikeouts in the game last time against the Giants in L.A. But here in San Francisco, it allows all four runs on five hits. Oh, walked four, struck out three to give up a home run. The the big home run actually was Evan Longoria. That's uh actually ended up being all the runs the Giants needed. They get did get another double from Brandon Belt knocking in a run, but Maeda takes a loss there. Dodgers drop three out of four against the Giants in San Francisco. In Miami, the Marlins shut out the Rockies. The Rockies scored a combined three. I mean, they scored a combined two runs. In that series in Miami, uh, Marlins beating them. It was a, actually a very nice start from the young young Caleb Smith, the left-hander for the Mar- uh, Marlins. So, I mean, you got to like that, yeah. If you're a Marlins fan, with seven innings. Uh, shutout baseball for two ru- two hits, one walk, nine strikeouts. I was just like looking, like he's left-handed, right? Yeah, left-hander for them. Beating they beat Chad Bettis actually, who's had a very nice outing, very nice start of the season for the Rockies. His ERA does stay below three, but he went seven innings, allowed two runs on four hits, struck out five, walked one, did give a home run to uh, J- uh, make that make that Rojas. So Rojas hit another home run. He went he hit one off of. Clayton Kershaw, when they were in over in L.A., Marlins, big home run off of him, got the win. Marlins actually playing pretty well against the tough teams. All right. And finally in the game, we're just going to finish up this. The Red Sox beat the Rays 4-3 to to break their, to snap their winning streak. And then the Blue Jays beat the Rangers 7-2 to on a nice start from Jay Happ. I see he went seven innings, allowed two runs on five hits. Is that nine strikeouts to give up a home run to uh, – Nunez, and that was pretty much it that he allowed as the Toronto ran up the score on the Rangers as they win that one seven to two. Salarte so another home run for the Blue Jays. All right, that'll do it for Sunday, and just want to get on now. We're going to talk about it for the rest of the segment as we finish up the second segment here. The Pittsburgh Pirates getting some nice starting, starting pitching from their young young guys. I mean, uh, Nick Kingham in his first start. For the 
Pirates and his first start in the major leagues goes seven shutout innings. I mean, when you against the Cardinals lineup like that, you got to like that right there. I mean, you got some good major league hitters in that lineup, and he goes seven. Or I mean, the thing that's the thing about young pitchers though. Sometimes they can be a little flash in the pan. I mean, they're these guys. They play all they have was some video from minor leagues from the minor leagues. When he's got his, if he's got good stuff, if he's got throws hard, got good off speed, if he's gonna get it over, he's stealing strikes. Uh, I mean, I mean, getting ahead in the count. Basically, that's all it takes. And if you're a young pitcher like that, and you have, you're able to get ahead in the count early against these major league hitters, they're not gonna have much. Uh, they're not gonna know what you're gonna do. Basically, like what's his out pitch? How how good is his out pitch working? And he had it going. I mean. The thing about a perfect game, though, is I mean, he had nine strikeouts. That's going to help right there. You're getting when you get quarter when he went seven innings. Yeah, it's twenty one. That's twenty one outs right there, and he got a third of those outs by himself. So I mean, uh, almost more than them actually. Yeah, more than a third of the outs by himself. So with a strikeout, I mean, he is not really. I mean, you do want to rely on your defense a little bit, but he's he's getting these guys with some nasty stuff, and he's able to put people away. And that's what happens when you're a young pitcher. And uh, they don't really know what your off speed looks like. They probably know how hard you throw to a fastball. You know, when you like to start off, like maybe you're going pitch, to pitch a guy backwards, start him off with some breaking balls. They could look because major league hitters like to guess. They guess the speed, they guess the location, and that's when you see a lot of big home runs. Is when they guess right and they're able to be right on time and, and hit the ball a long way. But when they don't guess right, uh, yeah, they can look pretty silly. So. When you're a young guy and you can just keep people off balance, keep them off balance, not be predictable in a count, stay ahead of the count, that's when you can be really good, especially as a young, a young guy where they don't have much tape on you and they don't know, what, okay, he's up one and two, he's probably going to go to the slider, so I should look slider. I mean, he probably just he was mixing them up, throwing fastballs and off-speed counts, probably throwing off-speed and fastball counts. So, I mean, the key for a young pitcher like that, especially when, you, yeah, when you're unknown and Guys aren't really sure about your movement. I mean, he's pretty nasty in himself. The, the, fa- the fact, I mean, he has a pretty interesting delivery and everything too. So, I mean, the guy in a, those bright yellow uniforms, bright yellow tops with the black pants and the black hat with the white or with the with the yellow um, stripes around the top of the hat. So, it's pretty interesting, pretty cool for that young right-hander for the Pirates as he got. I mean, near perfect debut. Seven innings, only gave up that one hit with two outs in the seventh. Finished off the seventh, and that was then one was relieved. So, I mean, that's the, thing, the other thing about perfect games is when you, I mean, how many pitches did he have? Where is he? He has a, he was at ninety eight pitches, which actually is pretty nice. That's pretty good for seven shutout innings, actually, especially with nine strikeouts. That's not bad at all. But yeah, imagine if he was pitched two more innings. I mean, he's probably going to go into the one twenties, which is not something you want from a guy who's just making his major league debut. All right. Next segment, we're actually next segment. We're going to go over the Yankees. Pretty much. We're going to talk about the Yankees a lot. And the fact that DD, the fact that DD Gregorius is having a season to remember, at least a season to start off. I mean, he probably will be, if I would be surprised if he wasn't the AL player of the month for, for April. I mean, he, the guy hit, I mean, what's he at nine home runs now hit a, a game tying home run, for the Yankees on uh, Saturday, and and late late in that game against the Angels, getting the win there for them, as they came, went into Anaheim and just didn't didn't let the Showtime didn't let the Otani show uh, outstage him. So Otani did actually hit a home run, I believe that was on Friday against Severino. But yeah, I mean, look at that game on Saturday. Garrett Richards, who has actually had a really nice start to his season. The Yankees tagged him for five runs in the first and five runs in the second inning. So, I mean, that's tough. As you look at his, look at, I mean, he went, yeah, one and one and two thirds innings. Only lasted, didn't couldn't even get out of the se- second inning as he allowed five earned, I mean, five earned runs, nine unearned, which means they put, yeah, so they had, they had that one big error that, um, yeah, by Zach Cozart there that probably cost him. That's why he got the four unearned runs. But, I mean, yeah, with Tanaka going as well as he was. That was the game on Saturday. They blew him out. But it's Friday. Friday game was when uh, DD hit that long home run 
to get the win for the Yankees. Yeah, this is four. To, it was an extra innings, exactly. So I'm just trying to think. When did that that happened? That happened. Don't I'm not a liar. But yeah, Otani actually also hit a home run too off of Swift Severino. That sent everybody into a frenzy. His fourth homer, of Shohei Otani. As I mean, he's kind of lost a little bit of steam. Haven't really talked about him that much lately on the show because of I mean, just his he got a little blister blister action. But he'll be pitching on Tuesday for the Angels as they actually. Always are going to be now due to that rain out that one time where he got pushed to uh, push push that start. Now they're going to be pay, p- pitching him on Tuesdays every week as they will be going and where are they playing on Tuesday? They're playing at home against the Orioles and they actually don't have him starting. They have Tropiano starting on Tuesday, so maybe they're pushing him to Wednesday as they're going to ha- host the uh, Baltimore Orioles this week in Anaheim. I said maybe they're just completely. Yeah, you know, he. I think they're gonna they're gonna skip him. Actually, that maybe it's that blister is still not looking too good. They don't even have him on the as a projected starter. They have Andrew Heaney going on Wednesday as well. So no, maybe no Shohei Otani this week. We'll have to wait for next week for some more Showtime. As he did. I mean, go look at the highlight. I do. Re- I do recommend going and looking at the highlight from his home run on Friday. I mean, he turned around 98 like it was nothing and put it into the bleachers. So you got like that. Definitely. I mean, you could tell when a guy cheats. The, pl- the pitch was around the inside corner. He just opened his hips up and flew that bat through. But he probably was looking inside anyway. So he picked it up early. You got like that. He got quick hands. All right. Next segment, we're going to go over the Yankees. We're going to talk about D.D. Gregorius. We're probably going to talk about the whole NL, uh, AL East a little bit as well, as well as the NL West, as uh, we have a lot of good stuff going on all around the league, as we'll talk about that when we get back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back, GSMC Baseball Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Tom Doherty. As we were starting this third segment here on a Monday, coming off of a nice weekend of baseball, we had some, like I said, some nice series over the weekend. Didi Gregorius continuing to rake as he puts this league on notice that, I mean, not only can he just take advantage of that short porch in, in right field at Yankee Stadium, but he can pretty much hit it out anywhere. A guy's got power. I mean, this is a guy who came up with the Diamondbacks. Yeah. Arizona Diamondbacks, D.D. Gregorius. And then um, I believe we're going to find out where he was traded to. But, yeah, he came up with the Diamondbacks, uh, found a home and for the Yankees. Been, I mean, he's been pretty much the replacement for Derek Jeter at shortstop. And the only the first one actually to kind of um, be a solidified guy there. I mean, yeah, they acquired him. There were t- three team trade that sent Robbie Ray, Robbie Ray from the, the Tigers to the Diamondbacks, and the Yankees sent Shane Green to Detroit. So, not that much, not that big of a block, blockbuster trade, kind of one that went under under the radar. But yeah, I mean, Duty actually was drafted by the Reds. Want to be want to just give you guys the his due there, and he is um, from the Netherlands. Was born in Amsterdam. Plays for the Dutch national team. You go like that if you are. From either Curacao or your, your Netherlands fan, I always remember all those guys from Curacao also play for the national team, uh, the N- Dutch national team, which actually is pretty good. They, I think they went to a World World Baseball Classic final in 2013. 
as yeah he uh, also uh, they also won the baseball world cup in panama as gd was on that team in 2011 all right that's cool i didn't know that about him yeah he got, i thought he was from curacao but no he's from he was born in amsterdam in the netherlands all right, so just continuing on here with the Yankees. I mean, all their big boppers going. We have not heard. Uh, J- Carlos Stanton is is uh, persona non grata right now, it looks like. I mean, the guy is kind of unheard of. I mean, unfortunately, the Yankees are actually winning as they sit two games back behind the Red Sox at 18 and, 19, 18 and 9. The Red Sox are at 20 and 7 on the season. Um but yeah, it says the Red Sox regained that best record in the league as Diamondbacks were once tied with them. Diamondbacks lost on Sunday. They're 19 and 8, one game back of that best record. But yeah, the Yankees, after getting a sweep against a tough Angels team, Angels were uh, on the roll, but now they're only four games up, four games in five over 500 as they sit in uh, second place or make that third place in the National and American League West behind the Astros and the Mariners, who both had good weekends winning the final two games of their series. We have the Angels lost four in a row now as they uh, will start a series hosting the Baltimore Orioles, looking to get back on track with that one. So, But more about the Yankees. They got Gary Sanchez. Gary Sanchez is going. DD's got 10 home runs, leading the league. Um, getting good, nice pitching performances, kind of back and forth. They're definitely one of the more volatile teams, but, I mean, they put up, let's see, two on, two on Sunday, 11 on Saturday, and I think 10 on Friday, or 4 on Friday. So, I mean, their offense is kind of here, here, hitting there, but, I mean, they still got Chapman at the back end of that bullpen now with a few with five saves now, and uh, even the, the they're getting back Robertson and everything. And they brought up Glaber Torres as well. So bring, they have some good guys in the farm system as well as so they're bringing up guys, play second base, fill in holes as needed. But yeah, when you got D.D. Gregorius basically being the guy that Giancarlo Stanton was going to be, you can't be too too upset if you're a Yankee fan. Um, Stanton's still, you know, he's scuffling right now at 238 batting average with uh, only, I think, a handful of home runs. Yeah, he's got five home runs and uh, yeah, 238 batting average. Not, not too hot right now for the uh, Yankees slugger. As I'm looking at his, I'm going to look at his strikeout totals already for the season. He's at 40 strikeouts through where are the Yankees at? I think not that many games though. <laughs> yeah, there, there's 18 and 9 right now. 18 and 9, 40 strikeouts already through 27 games. That's not too hot. Uh, yeah, you got to fix that up. I mean, it's almost 2 to 1. Strikeouts as the Yankees. I mean, they're getting they're getting production from other places. That's the one thing they are doing. They are doing that is happening for New York. They're getting production from other places. They're getting GD going. They got Judge. I think is uh he hit a couple more home runs over the weekend, and then Gary Sanchez is he hits the absolute towering home runs. I mean, just towering home runs. I'm just looking at my scores here. I actually forgot uh, for the other New York team. I kind of forgot to give Jacob Degrom his due. As he went seven and a third innings of shutout baseball on Friday, actually, I totally forgot about that game. I was wanted to highlight that game. I mean, it was against the Padres, mind you, about that. But Padres can be kind of nasty. They got some good young players on that team. As uh, Francis Cordero, that guy hit some bombs. As I'm and I'm tangenting quickly here, but I just kind of noticed it on my sheet here that Degrom went seven and a third innings allowed no runs on five hits, eight strikeouts, three walks. So, just FYI, if you guys were wondering how Jacob Degrom did. Uh, over the weekend, he pitched on Friday in San Diego. All right. So just looking at some more of these big news stories coming up. I know we had the Pirates. Nick Kingham, Kingham have a great start, a uh, great first start of his career. Red Sox are the are, uh, first team in 20 wins. I mean, yeah, I mean, they, they had to snap that Rays straight. They lost the first two games of the series. Rays were... Rolling on an eight-game winning streak, uh, just getting good pitching performances. They got an inside the park home run from. Uh, I mean, it was it was on a misplay from uh, the. Um, it was on a misplay from from what what's it called, 
D, uh, what's his name? Jackie Bradley Jr. out in center field came and dove for the ball. Went all the way to center field and uh, D, Darnard's man, old man Darnard's man, who's still got some good wheels, just kind of jogged around the bases and got it inside the park homer. But uh, no, the, the, uh, the Red Sox came back on Sunday and got the win there to improve to the 20 wins, be the first team to 20 wins on the season as we come uh, to a close here. The final day of April actually is today. And I think it's a Monday, so we're going to have a shorter slate of games. I'll go over those games in the next segment. I'll probably go over uh, Monday's and Tuesday's games as uh, I won't see you again until Wednesday. So, yeah, we have a shorter slate today. Not not that short, though. We got, we got everybody, not everybody's playing, but there are some good games coming up as we have a couple of series that I do want to go over uh, just as, in a few minutes here in the next segment as we finish up this one. Uh, the Cubs, yeah, just going to go over the Cubs a little bit. They're still kind of tolling around that middle of that middle of the pack. They did get, they are over five hundred though. They're fifteen and ten, kind of like that. They were right behind half the half game behind the Pirates right now. Again, way too early to look at standings. I'm just look, we just like to look at them. Just look at records. Cubs the way trending. They've won four in a row, which is nice, as they did sweep the series of their division rival, the Brewers. Who uh, who were supposed to be that team that kind of be surprising? This I mean, supposed to be they were expected to be the where the Pirates are right now. The Pirates are in first place. They were not expected to be there at all. They kind of did a fire sale over the week over this off season, but now they're with that young lineup. They're play, playing really well. And then Milwaukee did the opposite, where they acquired a bunch of big names, getting Lorenzo Cain and Christian Yelich. But but they aren't. Uh, they've lost four in a row now, as they. Uh, are sixteen and thirteen, but the whole that whole NL Central actually is pretty going to be pretty spicy, go, pretty spicy going through the whole season, as the Reds are kind of the doormat. Uh, well, not kind of they are the, the Reds are the doormat of that division only at seven wins, but um, everybody else is over fifteen wins or higher. Brewers have sixteen, Cardinals and Cubs have fifteen, and the Pirates are at seventeen. So that's pretty good. That's a nice little uh, division right there. Out central, I mean, everybody kind of those top four teams are all within two games of the Pirates, or one and a half. All right, just looking at the rest of the divisions here. Out, out west in the NL West, it actually in the NL West it actually looks a little interesting. As the Dodgers are still sitting in fourth place at twelve and fifteen, they're not trending the right way. They've lost. They took dropped the last two against the Giants of that series, the nightcap on Saturday and Sun, and then the game on Sunday. So uh, they're looking to right the ship. We'll go over their series coming up uh, this week in the next segment as they're going to be having a tough one. Just going to tell you that it's a tough one coming up uh, in division, though, uh, as they stay in the NL West. Anything else? Oh, yeah, Brewers. As I go through my notes here, I mean, not, I mean the Braves. Can't forget about the Braves. They have two guys uh, who, I mean, I don't know if you guys ever heard of. I mean, we, I know Ronald Acuna. Was a big name, but who who hasn't heard of Ozzy Albies? This guy has had not, has is second in the league in home runs at nine, and uh, he just is put as a barn burner. He's kind of putting the uh, Al uh, what is it, Acuna Junior on notice as he's like, hey, I'm I'm here too. I'm I'm a good prospect. I'm leading off this game. I'm hitting bombs. I mean, he's telling everybody, uh, don't just look at this guy. I want I need some attention too. As uh, the Braves. The upstart Braves over there in the NL East, along with the Phillies, are trying to trying to make some noise. The Braves scored ten runs on Sunday to take that series against the Phillies. I mean, Acuna Jr. was three for two, three, two for three. Albies was two was two for five with three runs scored, three RBIs. I mean, you know, like you got like that as they combined for eleven hits. I mean, you still got Freddie Freeman, Nick Markakis in that lineup. Um, you got like that all of it, and so same with Ender and Ciarte. As a, he kind of backing up that lineup, the bottom of the order, he had three hits on Sunday too. So two runs scored and a, and a walk. So, I mean, and the whole bullpen's all figuring itself out too as they went into Philadelphia, which is actually a tougher place to play now these days, especially in that small park, and held the held the Phillies to only one run on Sunday. And I think they held them to pretty low-scoring games that whole time. Yeah, only one run on Saturday as well. I think Friday was the only day that got away from them. As, yeah, the, the Phillies beat them on Friday, but uh, it was Aaron Nola start. I always like to highlight my Aaron Nola starts. He went seven innings, only got three runs on seven hits, struck out four, walked one. That was back on Friday. Aaron Nola. 
like him. Good right-hander for the Phillies. He's a tough guy. So I mean, um, they're gonna have they're gonna have to keep testing themselves. Obviously, throughout the season, you get a good first month and you get a little head, little head uh, goes to your head a little bit. But I think that Phillies team. Uh, I mean, I remember when Gabe? I remember when Gabe Kapler was getting booed. Now they're look now look at them. They're seven games over five hundred at sixteen and nine. If they can keep it going the rest of the season, I mean. That the Philadelphia fans will will make Gabe Kapler the mayor of that city, as the Phillies are definitely not expected to be as good as they are. But they definitely have a nice little lineup. I mean, they, they acquired Carlos Santana in the offseason. They still got Reese Hoskins, who had a great end of the year last year. You got Aaron Altier, who's who's having a crazy start to the season, not hitting that great for average, but he's already got uh, a couple of clutch home runs and big hits. I mean, and then also, I mean, Afaro. The averages aren't that great, but they're getting a little spot. One, if one guy drops the drops the ball, they're kind of getting the, everybody. I mean, Odubel Herrera and Hoskins are hitting well, both hitting well over three hundred. So I mean, you got some good averages in that lineup there. But uh, Philly's kind of just finding out where they get production as they go, and they're, they're kind of rolling with that. So that's if you're going to do it like that, you're going to do it like that. If you're the Phillies, you're not going to say no to production throughout from throughout your lineup especially from some young guys coming up and uh, showing out. All right. That'll finish off this last segment or this, this lot, this, just this, this, this last segment, the third segment, we have one more to go as we're going to preview some games for Monday and Tuesday here on the GSMC baseball podcast. And we'll be right back after these messages. Want to know the latest in soccer? Then listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Soccer Podcast. From MLS, the World Cup, and the Premier League. We've got you covered. The latest updates, the hottest matches, and news on the league's top players. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Soccer Podcast. David Beckham scores the goal to take England all the way to the World Cup Finals. Listen now. All right, welcome back in GSMC Baseball Podcast, the final segment here on a Monday as we will go in over some games for you. Actually, on Monday, today we actually have 11 games, only only a few teams with some off days here today on the Mondays. We're going to get some good series started for you. Out in Washington, the Nationals are going to bring in the Pirates. As I mean, you look at their records, you think it would be flipped maybe. Nationals are, are four games under five hundred. With the Pirates, six games, as I did mention before, there are six games over 500 there to start off the season now uh, as we come to the close of the first month of the season. Well, I mean, first full month of the season. We did, have, we did, start, in, we did start in May in March, but uh, April 30th here, and we'll be finishing off the month in style as it is. I mean, the Pirates and the Nationals, Tanner Roark going for the Nationals against Jamison Tyone, who's looking to bounce back from his last start, which was not too great. Uh, Tyone getting roughed up. But, I mean, if you look at his, uh, yeah, I mean, he gave up 12 runs on 11, on four, 15 hits, and um, on 14 hits and five and two thirty over his last two starts, actually, were both losses. But um, definitely the last time he pitched in Washington was, he pitched pretty well. That was the end of the season last year. He only allowed one run on four hits. In seven innings. All right, Jake Arrieta goes today for the Phillies against Straley for the Dan Straley for the Marlins. Two right-handers. Arrieta is three and zero with a one eight two ERA. The Phillies got to really be happy with the fact that they were able to stay the course and sign Arrieta to that contract over the offseason. I mean, it took a while to get it finished up, but um, Arrieta has lived up to the hype definitely. I mean, he dominated the Pirates on on April 19th. Only allowed one hit on uh, striking out 10 on seven scoreless. So he'll be looking at to uh, he looked definitely f- uh, beat up on the pod beat the beat the Diamondbacks as well actually on um, Wednesday. So last week, and he'll be coming back now for his next start today against the Marlins, who actually just took two out of three from the Rockies at home. They're playing. They're got to be feeling pretty good too if you're Miami, but it's still Miami. <laughs> to be honest. 
in LA, I mean against the against the Dodgers in and in Arizona, down in Phoenix is the Dodgers and the Diamondbacks. Like I said, the Dodgers are gonna be starting a series today and there it's another toughie after dropping three out of four from the Giants over the weekend in San Francisco. They're gonna play the Diamondbacks. It's gonna be Ross Stripling against Zach Granke. On Monday it's Ross Stripling. I it looks like he's getting his first start on the season. He's gonna be spot start uh, in place of Rich Hill. I mean, he's been a long relief guy. I've been kind of that guy who's been waiting to get his name called to be in the rotation or at least get his chance to start off a game as he'll be starting for Rich Hill. In his stead on a Monday against Zach Greinke, he's tough, another tough right-hander going against the Dodgers. Sonny Gray has been pitching for the Yankees. He, used to right, he looks to right the ship as the Yankees are going to be starting a, a fun little series in Houston against the Astros, Charlie Morton has been brilliant this season. He's 3-0 with a 1.86 ERA. He's been very nice in his... I mean, he did come off his worst outing. He was struggling with a little bit with the fastball command. He should walk five in four innings. Did get a no decision, though, in that game. As he's 3-0, like I said, on the season, look at his fourth, fourth win and to stay perfect in his win-loss column. Um, yeah, but the ERA looks pretty good too, and he's got 35 strikeouts already. Sonny Gray, though, on the other hand, he's only one and one, but he has a 7.71 ERA. So he's definitely not looked his best this year, as he uh, did give a, did make a, a good little stride on Wednesday against the Twins. Only allowed three runs in four and two thirds innings, but got that pitch count up too high, and um, got taken out before he could complete five innings. Did face the Astros last year in the ALCS. And um, gave up two runs on five, on one hit on one hit over five innings. So he knows that lineup and seems to face them pretty well. I mean, did did go right in the playoffs last year. That's Sunny Gray looking to bounce back, lower that ERA some more. Out in Cleveland, Texas, and the Indians are going to get going in a, four, a three game series in in Cleveland. It'll be Cole Hamels against Trevor Bauer. Uh, Trevor Bauer, I like Trevor Bauer. He's a good pitcher, good right-hander for the Indians. Was that spike curveball, like that spike curveball versus the left-hander and Cole Hamels, the veteran. Hamels is one and four with a four point four one ERA, though, as he uh, hasn't gotten a win in his last four starts. He's only three with an ERA just under five. And Trevor Bauer, though, pitching pretty well. He's pitching pretty well. Only had one run on four hits and six and two-thirds innings, and that was against the Cubs last week. As he's looking for his third win of the year. John Lester is going in Chicago against Kyle Freeland. Rockies and Cubs starting a series off in the friendly confines. John Lester's two and one. Freeland looking for his second win of the year. He's one and three, four point three three ERA. Lester at two three two 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 uh, three two nine. I can't speak all these numbers. Two and one though. Lester looking for his third win of the year. All right. Looking through the rest of these uh, pitching matchups, and not really getting anything jumping off the page for me. As we are actually, well, one more. We have Aaron Sanchez against Lance Lynn for the Twins and Blue Jays. Blue Jays Sanchez is looking for his second win of the year. Lynn looking for his first win in a Twins uniform, as that'll be out in Minneapolis. All right, Tuesday's games. Full slate on Tuesday. 15 games for us to talk about. Max Scherzer will be going for the Nationals against Chad Cool. Cool actually pitched pretty well. He's been pitching pretty well. He needs to get the ERA down a little bit. But he's 3-1 and as he's gotten some nice run support from his teammates there in Pittsburgh. But they'll be facing off against the Nationals. Uh, continuing that series, it'll be, like I said, Max Scherzer going again. He's already 5-1 and one in the season with a 1-6-2 ERA. So he's looking to get his sixth win, be the first to six wins. In Major League Baseball. Uh, down in Arizona, it'll be Kershaw against uh, Cook. Kershaw 1-4 and four on the season. And uh, Matt Cook 1-0. and oh. Matt Cook was solid since he's been the replacement for Taiwan Walker. I mean, Taiwan Walker took how to get his uh, season cut short as he uh, is going to be getting Tommy John surgery. But Clayton Kershaw going for the Dodgers 1-4 with a 2-8-4 ERA. 42 strikeouts. But um, did not pitch very well in his last, his last outing against the Marlins, and uh, six walks, most walks in his career, I believe, in that game. Not very good looking for Kershaw. All right, so they're going to be going against a, against a, t- a tough Arizona lineup. Out in, as I'm looking at these, out in Houston's me 
Montgomery and Justin Verlander. Verlander's 4 and 0, has a great start of the season. He's tied for first in wins, second in strikeouts, and um, opponent's batting average in the American League. I mean, he's already at 48 strikeouts against Jordan Montgomery, the left-hander for the Yankees. Been pitching pretty well this season. He's 2 and 2 and 0 with a 3.78 ERA, 23 strikeouts for the young left-hander Verlander. Looking to continue on his his hot streak. I mean, he's he's pretty good. He's only allowed two runs on four hits over seven innings in his last start against the Angels. And be going again tomorrow in Houston at home against that tough Yankee lineup. We'll see how he. That's gonna be a good matchup. Him against Judge and Stanton and Gary Sanchez and D.D. Gregorius, who's actually probably hitting cleanup as he has been lately for the Yankees. All right, out in Cleveland, Louis Doug Fister against Clevenger for the Cleveland Indians. Mike Clevenger pitching very nice as he uh, after he came off that shutout performance with a little bit of a run. Uh, I mean, took a no decision, gave up four runs on eight hits in Seattle or against, against Seattle, but he's still two and zero with a sub three ERA, twenty two strikeouts. Fister looking for his second win as he's one and two with an ERA just under four. Uh, Noah Syndergaard, there we go. Noah Syndergaard is going to go against the uh, Braves as the Braves and Mets are going to start a series in Flushing, New York at City Field. It'll be Sean Newcomb, lefty for the Braves against Syndergaard, who is 2-0 with a 2-8-6 ERA, 46 strikeouts. And uh, But yeah, man, he's definitely, he's not been able to pick up the wins because of the, some difficulties with run support. Uh, the Mets have been getting the wins later in the later in the game as they're, I mean, they're still 17-9. But 2-0, uh, Syndergaard did have to take no decision his last time out. He pitched into the eighth against St. Louis uh, in St. Louis, but did take no decisions when the defense and bullpen uh, failed him a little bit there. Uh, a little bit, but a lot. T- took away a win from him. Newcomb has pitched nicely through his, uh, after a rough debut, has pitched nicely throughout the rest of the month. Red Sox are going to be hosting the Kansas City Royals as it'll be Chris Sale making a start against Jacob Eunice for the Royals. Eunice is 3-2 and two with the 3-3-4 three, three, four ERA with 25 strikeouts. So it's a nice little start of the season for him, the young right-hander for the Royals. Chris Sale, left-hander for the Red Sox, is 2-1 and one with a 2-3-1 ERA, 45 strikeouts. Wasn't his best, though, in um, his last start. Did get a win, though, as he gave it four hits and three runs in Toronto. Only struck out four in that game. That's low for Chris Sale. All right, looking at the rest of these starters here. We got any other big names here? Homer Bailey for the Reds, still looking for his first win. He'll be going against Chase Anderson against for the Brewers out in Cincy. Start, that game's tomorrow. Michael Walker will be, fo- will be facing off against James Shields in St. Louis. Is the it'll be White Sox and Cardinals the inter the interleague series going on uh, this week? I believe there's actually only one going on. Sometimes we have two or three, but then, yep, there's got to be one at all times. It looks like that's going to be it. White Sox and Cardinals coming up this week, starting on Tuesday. And I mean, that's pretty much it. We'll go over the rest of the games uh, for the week on Wednesday during the show on Wednesday morning. But for this one, I mean, yeah, it was kind of a weekend recap going over the Yankees, how they're pitching, playing pretty well, pitching pretty well too, actually. Uh, getting some nice starts from CeCe Sabathia, who I didn't think was going to have that great of a year this year, uh, coming into his... Uh, what's he, 30, 38, 39 years old season. Uh, but he's having kind of a renaissance as he started that off last year, pitching well as he continues to throw the ball very nicely from that left side. I mean, he's always been kind of crafty, always been kind of, I mean, you got to redevelop yourself sometimes when you're an older pitcher. I mean, being left handed, you got that craftiness naturally. Uh, but he's got that kind of unorthodox delivery where he really drops down that back leg, hides the ball well, and he can uh, even when he's not throwing the hardest like he used to, he can still get the ball up there. I mean, when he's throwing even when he's throwing low nineties, it kind of zips up on you because of the fact that he hides the ball so well and has kind of that herky jerky delivery. He's got him through um, his career his whole the whole time. I mean, he's always had he's always been like that, but maybe even now that he's had to kind of reinvent himself, uh, not be not really blowing people away with the hard stuff. He's been able to be successful based off of his uh, deception, which is always nice for uh, for a pitcher in general at all. Yeah. All right, that's gonna wrap it up for this like, this game uh, this episode as we come to the end here. I recap the games for you from this weekend. We had some nice series. The Yankees got the sweep over the Angels. 
Uh, Giants took two out of, three out of four from the uh, Brit, from the Dodgers. Actually, Dodgers only got that one win on Saturday morning, the first game of the doubleheader. Uh, Red Sox snapped the Rays' a game winning streak after losing the first two games. They got the win on Sunday to snap that winning streak for the Rays. The Yankees continue to roll on as they push their streak think to nine. Yeah, they're at nine games in a row now for uh, New York. And then also kind of went over the series for that are restarting this week. We got some good ones going on. As uh, I mean, the Braves and Mets will be facing off in New York, Pittsburgh, and Washington. Uh, Giants they're ho- they're hosting the Padres. Eh, not that great of a series. But then also Dodgers and Arizona, and then obviously Yankees and Houston will probably be the series of the week to watch. Houston against New York. All right, so we'll see everybody on Wednesday. Enjoy some baseball till then. So I'll sign off for now, and we'll be back Wednesday for another episode of the GSMC Baseball Podcast. Everybody go watch some baseball. See ya. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Baseball Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network, from movies to music. Music from sports to entertainment and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.